in the previous section, we looked at being able to work polar functions. In this section, we're going to extend that and we're going to look at calculus operations with respect to polar functions. So we're going to be able to find derivatives of polar functions as well as the horizontal and vertical tangents. Um, we're also going to find areas of polar functions and then arc lengths of polar functions. To start, we're going to be working with the derivative of a polar function. And I'm going to show you how to derive this formula, but this is going to be the formula that we use for the derivative of a polar function. And to find that derivative, just remember that x is equal to r cos of theta. And if I take the derivative of x, we're going to use the product rule. Okay, so the derivative of r is going to be dr d theta, and then we keep the cos of theta. And then the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so that'll be negative r sine of theta. Recall that y is r sine of theta in polar. And so if we took the derivative of that, we would again use the product rule. And so that means that dy is going to be equal to dr d theta sine theta plus dr d theta or I'm sorry, just r cos theta. Excuse me, we already took the derivative with of r. So this will be r cos of theta. And then recall from parametrics that we can rewrite this as dy dx. And so we would just take this expression. So we would have dr d theta sine theta plus r cos of theta. And then we would divide that by what we got for dx, which is dr d theta cos theta minus r sine theta. All right, and that is our formula. Okay, so that's how this formula is derived, just in case you care. Um, or if maybe you forget it, at least you can remember that you just take the derivatives and then just divide them by one another. And so we're going to go ahead and utilize those to be able to find the slopes as well as horizontal and vertical tangents of polar functions. So we have this f at theta is equal to 3 sine theta. And we're going to find the slope at pi thirds. Then we're going to find the horizontal and vertical tangents. OK, so first of all, we're going to find the derivative. And what might be helpful is to remember that whenever we see f at theta, that's the same thing as r. So I'm just going to rewrite that as r is 3 sine theta. And the derivative dr d theta is going to be 3 cosines of theta. And all I'm going to do is just substitute back into the slope formula. So I'm going to substitute here, 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 and here. And so our dy dx is going to be equal to 3 cos theta sine theta plus r, which is 3 sine theta cos theta. And then in our denominator, dr d theta, we said was 3 cos theta. And we multiply by another cos of theta. And then finally, minus r, which we said was 3 sines of theta. And then we're going to multiply that by another sine of theta. All right. Now, if we simplify this expression, which we should, Okay, what that's going to do is that's going to tell us that in the numerator, we get six sine cos theta. So six sine theta cos theta, right? And then the denominator, we get three cos square minus three sine square. So it's three cos square theta minus three sine square theta. Last thing we're going to do for part A is we are going to find the slope at pi thirds. OK, so this is dy dx. And then at theta equals pi thirds, that's going to be equal to 6 sine pi thirds, cos of pi thirds, divided by 3 cos pi thirds squared. And then minus 3 sine square of pi thirds. Now, if we compute this, we remember that sine of pi thirds is the square root of 3 over 2, and the cos of pi thirds is a half. So if we simplify this expression, that's going to give us 6 times root 3 over 2 
times a half divided by 3 root 3 over 2 square minus 3, I'm sorry, 3 times a half square, excuse me, substituted the wrong one in there. So we know that cosine is a half at pi thirds, and this is going to be root 3 over 2 squared. All right, and now we just do the arithmetic to simplify this. Um, the numerator is going to turn into 6 roots of 3 over 4. The denominator is going to be 3 fourths minus, this will become 3 fourths after squared it, so that'll be 9 fourths, okay? Or another way to write that, 6 roots of 3 over 4 divided by negative 6 fourths. And notice that the 4s will cancel, the 6s will cancel. We're left with root 3 over negative 1, which is negative root 3. All right, now, the question is, does that make any sense? And what we could do is we can look at the graph to determine whether or not that makes any sense. So let's go to the graph. And remember, our original polar function was 3 sines of theta. And we're at the, the angle pi thirds. OK, so if we look at our graph, number 3 sine of theta, all right. Um, and if I go out a little bit, we're going to, to pi thirds, which is right about here. And so at pi thirds, if I were to construct the graph of this, we just have a circle, okay, maybe something like this. All right. And if we go up to pi thirds is the angle, we know that the tangent line would certainly have a negative slope there. Okay. So that's what we're looking at. We're looking at the slope exactly at that point. All right. So um, that takes care of the slope at that point for part A. Now we still have to figure out what are the horizontal and vertical tangents. And what we're going to do is we're going to remember that this is the derivative. Now I'm going to refresh the screen really quickly. And we'll try again. So remember our derivative dy dx was going to be six sine theta cos theta, and then we would divide that by 3 sine square theta, or 3 cos square theta, excuse me. Minus 3 sine square theta. Horizontal tangents are when the numerator is equal to 0. Okay, so horizontal tangent over 0 to 2 pi, um, that would be so this would be part ii, that would be 6 sine theta cos theta equals 0, right? And certainly we know that this is going to be valid with 0 and pi, right, for that. And then for the cosine, that's going to be at pi halves, 3 pi halves. Now, we have to be careful because when we look at the graph, and of course, we could try to simplify this expression. Um, there might be a way to simplify this trigonometrically. So we should go back to the graph and look. And clearly, if I was to go for horizontal tangents, okay, horizontal meaning that the slope is zero, there would certainly be one at zero, and then there would also be one at pi halves, all right? But certainly not one right here, where the horizontal tangent or vertical tangent, and certainly not here. Okay, so we just have to be careful with this um, as we're going around our circle with this thing. Okay, so, um, so what might be helpful for us is to go back to the original function, all right, and just remind ourselves that, okay, well, at this function, we want the tangent to be equal to zero. Okay, so if we go back to the original function, we know that if we were to plot this out, that we clearly see at zero, there's going to be a horizontal tangent. And then finally, right here um, at pi, all right, if we were to kind of get circle, if we were to go through and see what happens here, remember, sine of pi is going to be zero. All right, so we certainly know that at this point, it's going to be, um, we're going to make sure that we have this pi halves. And so that's going to be a horizontal tangent as well. As well. So if we can look at the graph to figure that out. So it looks like that the horizontal tangents for this are going to be zero and pi halves, all right? But then we can also say at pi, 
and three pi halves as well, all right? Just because if we were to trace this function, all right, um, what we would see is that it would go through twice to be able to get the circle, okay? So check this out. If I just change this to pi, all right, um, notice that we get the exact same graph. If I go to pi over two, all right, so what's happening is um, if I, as I graph it, I'm actually going through the circle two times, which is why there's horizontal tangents at zero and pi halves and then pi and then three pi halves again, okay? So um, just to kind of give you an idea as to what's happening with this, all right? When we graph the function, all right? And I know this is a bad circle, but it goes around once, but then it goes around again, okay? So um, the first time we go through, we're looking for our horizontal tangents, and that would be when theta is zero, but then the coterminal would be pi. And then up here, okay, that's when we would have our pi halves and our three pi halves. All right, so just making sure that everybody understands why there's going to be all these horizontal tangents. Now, for vertical tangents, you just set the denominator equal to zero. Okay, so that's going to be where three cos square minus three sine square equals zero. Right? And if we go through and solve this, okay, um, we know that we could just say cos square theta equals sine square theta. And then if we take the square root of both sides, all right, be careful, we would have a plus or minus cos theta equals sine theta, all right? And that's only true at pi halves or pi fourths, excuse me, and three pi fourths, okay? So if you're looking at your unit circle, all right, we know right here that we have root two over two, root two over two on the unit circle. And then over here, we have negative root two over two and then negative root two over two, which means that the coordinates are equal to one another at those two points. All right. Now, technically, it's plus or minus, plus or minus. OK. Um, but we also have to consider the coterminal angles as well for this. OK. So, for instance, OK, remember, we're, we're revolving this a few times. So we also have to remember five pi fourths and seven pi fourths. OK. So if we look at the graph again of the circle, we know that there's going to be a vertical tangent here. And there's a vertical tangent here, okay? And this angle is going to be pi fourths. This angle is going to be three pi fourths. But remember, we go around the circle twice, okay? So um, again, the next one would be five pi fourths, and then we would have seven pi fourths, okay? So these are going to be all of the vertical tangents of the function. Okay, so I know it was a long one that we had to go through this, but just making sure that we understand how these polar functions work and we have to be cognizant of the domains of these. Okay, so we'll look at another example in our next video of this.